This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on? My reefing fam, March here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, what is this? This is a vlog that follows our never ending and changing saltwater store. It's kind of educational, it's kind of entertainment, it's kind of a mess in the store. What are we doing? We have some boxes and we have some more boxes. The name of this company is Frag Box, so I think it's very fitting when we have boxes all over the shop. What are these? Okay, we're gonna get into this, which is unboxing again. I know, we just did one, but back-to-back -back shipments, um, Wednesday this week, again, Friday this week. Uh, let me show you some of the stuff that came in. Everyone say hi to Eli. This is Eli. March and Eli in the shop. This is our newest member of the Frag Box Familia, and we're gonna show you some beautiful new goodies. Again, more Indonesian corals. Why? Why am I out of breath, first of all? Okay, <clears throat> why? Because um, certain suppliers are better for certain things. So over the course of a decade of ordering, I've kind of learned which ones are better for Acropora, which ones you know, have better selection of Goniopora, Alveopora, um, Torch Corals, Hammer Corals, Echnopora, Zoanthids. Let me turn off the flow in here. Oh, what are these? These are boxes. So we make our own products here in the shop. Maybe you haven't heard of them. Uh, Reef Casa Aquariums, the logo's upside down. Check out this one, actually, this is going through a major overhaul. I'm gonna do a video tomorrow on why you should never add Anthelia to your aquarium. If I've ever sold you a piece of this, I'm sorry. I wish I could take it back. I will never sell another piece of it. This thing is so annoyingly invasive. Look at this tank. I'm taking it down and it's popping up again over here. Anyways, th those are our tanks and um, we do our own packaging. So um, our boxes come and then we just got boxes and boxes in here trusty apex controller I press one button and the flow goes off in the store for 20 minutes we're gonna do something a little new this time usually I'm holding the camera and talking you through every single piece I'm gonna set up the camera on a tripod and we're gonna do more of the uh, a podcast I keep calling these vlog casts so you got a video but I'm talking a lot and we'll kind of just have a conversation going as we're unboxing the corals these are the ones that came in last time not this time the Zoas are looking fantastic some magicians Red people eaters, some pink hippos, candy apple red, candy apple green. The torches are out of this world. The acro looking really nice. This tank coming along. Um, the fragoon, I still have to work out the flow. I just threw on a Jabao uh, SOW20 and it is way too strong. But the corals are looking good. Again, I'm so, so happy with the rock work. I think you guys like it too, just looking at some of the comments. And there's more acro in these boxes. It's gonna fill this up, so. If you guys saw in the other video, I'm still waiting for that cool idea of how to organize the frags. I'm using these right now, but I'm not in love with them. I'm not crazy about the way they look. You may have to make some new ones. They just, they don't match the rock work. You see what I mean? Like, they really stand out, and I just want something a little more cohesive. And this rock, if you drill it, I'm afraid it's just going to crack. Say hello to our new Blonde Neso. Okay, what do we have here? Let's get into some of these corals. Let's see what we have. Quadruple bagged. I can't even see what's in there. Hmm, let's see when he opens it. The honors. This is Eli's first ever coral he's ever unboxed, ever. Um, step one on the razor blade, take off the cardboard. Rookie! <laughs> <laughs> okay, take two. I'll cut that out of the video. Don't worry. No, you won't. No, I won't. <laughs> let's see what we have. Shrooms. Don't eat them. Paul, if you're watching this, I like chocolate. Okay, now I just gotta do that 200 more times. Nice. Beautiful. We got one loose. Uh, Yuma, nice. Little Yuma rock. Um, beautiful, yeah, and one loose one. It happens, they do fall off from time to time. And then what we do is we take them, we'll throw them over here in our basket because Yumas, uh, we need them to be attached to a little piece of substrate before we can, uh, before we can attach them like, if I took it and just glued it down somewhere here in the tank, it's not going to stick. Within the, within a day, it's going to slime up and let go, and it's just not going to work. So we want it to attach to a little piece of gravel, and it will do that naturally with time. You ship them like, on what? This. Oh yeah, they ship them on a piece of like concrete substrate. I think I like this angle. Here, let's see our faces. Oh, hold on. Let's see. Let's come up with it. How about that? New angle. Who dis? You guys didn't know. I actually, I own a tripod. <laughs> Can you believe it? I don't, it doesn't have to be shaky cam. I think it adds to the experience though. And um, like you're really there. Yeah, like you're really there. Like a whole movie, except instead of looking at your kids, 
looking at me, the dog, corals, and all the staff. So, um, Eli, what's the Eli here? It's actually going to school to be a lawyer, but it's not going to help you criminals out there, right? Nope. Nope. What kind of law? Environmental law. Environmental law. Yeah. That's a cool. That's a cool branch of law. Hopefully, marine law as well. That would be nice. They could use some help. People like me out there taking the corals out of it. Um, shh, don't tell me that. These all have permits, guys. Actually, he was just asking me why back-to-back -back shipments. And um, it has to do with, in part, with permits. So when we get them, what's available, the suppliers will send me their current stock. And then and then you usually take, um, if it looks good, you want to order. And the, the permits expire. So once you've applied for them, you have to use them or at least you should use them because otherwise your supplier is out of pocket. So just a little bit of backstory on why we're doing this. Again, two nights in a row. I'm unboxing here some crazy, crazy mushrooms and I'm gonna grab the camera and show you in a second. And they're really nice. Okay, you know what, maybe I should grab the camera now. Looking at some humus, some rhodactus, and they're not, these are all gonna get fragged into smaller pieces. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So they come in like this. And I find people just don't normally buy um, a rock like this. One, it's a little funky looking. It's like a hockey puck. It's not like the prettiest. And I find people typically just, they just want one um, to grow and they want different colors. They don't want a rock for 150 or 200 bucks with, you know, five or six of them on there. These are all cultured. You can tell from this tag here. This means that they were all grown in the ocean. So trying to be somewhat sustainable. All from Indonesia, which is one of the nicest corals in the world, in my uh, professional opinion. And it's nice to frag it because, that was, no, actually this was an ice pack. It's good for smaller tanks, and a lot of people have smaller tanks. Like, how big is your tank? Actually, speaking about smaller tanks. I'm at three, but I'm hoping to go up to eight over the weekend. Tres, three gallons which is, uh, what, 12, 12 liters? Pico, that's, yeah. that's not a normal size to start with. What, what made you start that small? Uh, I was in my dorm room and I couldn't get caught, so I kept it in the corner of my room, far away from the window, and I snuck all my coral in that I actually got from Fragbox. Fragbox is the one that helped me set up my Pico tank completely. Dun, da, da, da. That's what we do, we help people in college who aren't supposed to have tanks, have tanks. That's our job here. We are bad, we are bad influences on you people that should be studying, but instead you're spending time with your fish and your corals. But Pico's good, because it's a small dorm room and it works, right? As long as you don't do fish, I find it's very simple. If you, um, back in the day, like when I started, three ga that was unheard of, like, mm. people didn't keep three gallons, five gallons, and this is not a normal tank size, like, 50, 60 gallon was considered nano. Now I think nano, the kind of the accepted, what would you say like accepted gallon sizes for nano tanks? I thought it was like under 20 gallons is considered like. I would small. say 10 to 10 to 30, you're still nano. Mm -hmm. 30 and up is a small reef tank. But the definition has really changed um, over time. Pico for me is like anything under like six, five to six gallons. I think I talked about this actually on a podcast with um, uh, Reef Dudes. I think we established what we thought at least the, um, what the sizing is. But it's, it's an unofficial thing decided by hobbyists and manufacturers, really. Whatever they decide to call it, if you guys accept it, then I guess that's, that's what it is. But there's no, there's no scientific definition for what a Pico reef is or what a nano reef is. And these humors are really nice. So quite a few of these are what you see is what you get. So when I order them, I get to pick from the supplier. Um, that's part of the reason why I like using this one is because he does a lot of that. And a lot of people like what you see is what you get. We're having a lot of website trouble right now, right? Mm -hmm. So we're moving over servers. If you guys have seen that our website is painfully slow, however slow it is for you, it's even slower for us. I'm trying to do stuff on it. So we are moving to a new server and that should be done hopefully this week and will be really really quick so you guys can i think it's it's so satisfying like a fast website mm -hmm. nothing worse than waiting for it to lower it hasn't been changed since 2016 
which is, yeah, it's an old server. It's about time. And I want to bring it into the modern era. The website, the design, I don't think it's going to change too much because it works. So I don't, I don't want to fix something that isn't broken, but the website is broken in terms of speed. So we're going to fix that. Design, maybe we can talk about at a later date. If there's someone out there that specializes in website design or can help with, I'm stuck with updating my PHP, if you know what that is, it's a WordPress site. PHP is old, and that's why I'm kind of moving servers. And so I can update the PHP and then go from there. But if there's any fish tank web guys out there, we could use some help. Mm, check it out, look how they ship the torches. Not all suppliers do this. They're kind of funky, they float them. Kind of cool, huh? Upside down with some elastic bands. This is something, I don't even remember ordering it, but it's here now. Uh, we don't get them too often, elephant ear mushroom coral so they get quite large like really really big they just split um separate mouths so you can see on the left right there there's one and it almost looks uh, right in the middle there's another it almost looks like a brain coral look at this blast or two even outside of the water the color is really nice so when the blue lights are on this is going to be really a fake fantastic fantastic piece but like the different types of reefers okay. i remember you said that like Everyone can figure it out. You just need to be persistent. Something like that. It sounds like something else. Yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but it was to the effect. And so I really wanted to do it, so I just went for it. Nice. I like that. I wonder how many people out there have inspired to get in this hobby. I know at least a few. And I wonder how many not even hear the store in Canada, how many people watching. You should comment below. If I, if I got you into the hobby, let me know. Comment in the comment section i'm just curious and um, i'm also curious how big of a tank you got and maybe there was a video in particular that did it for you um eli just asked me an interesting question that if i enjoy filming that is a resounding yes i think it comes through in the videos i think you guys can tell that i do enjoy doing it and um, i think you guys enjoy the videos clearly they do pretty well for a little reefing channel i think it helps it definitely helps for business, um, but I also think that it, it kind of makes everyone feel a little bit more engaged and like part of it, and it's almost like our own little community. You know, people come to the store here locally that watch it and say, oh, can I, you know, where's that thing? Or, oh, I saw that thing on Fragbox TV. You know, at least once or twice, a, no, more than once or twice. Many, many times throughout the day, the conversation goes to something about uh, Fragbox TV. And I think it's pretty cool because it's been, really transformative for the business and uh, it came about due to COVID, kind of a funky, funny way to get into making YouTube videos. I wanted to do it for the longest time, but I never really found the motivation. So if you go back and look at some of the older videos, there are, there's some crappy ones out there from eight, nine years ago, um, but nothing serious. And then COVID hit and here in Canada, we had some very, very tough laws and rules surrounding businesses. And it didn't feel like a very um, free and democratic country at that time. We were told what to do, and we did it. We closed our doors, we shut down our doors, as, as did many other types of businesses and companies were forced to close. So um, I promise I, I'm getting to how Frank Fox TV came. You guys know that on the channel, I tell these very like long-winded stories I have it in my mind how I'm going to get back to it, how I'm going to come back to the original topic. So, we're forced to, forced to close our doors, but I would like to, at the time, continue selling coral. So people are coming to the parking lot, we're doing this stupid thing called curbside pickup, which was the bane of my existence. It was, oh, thank you so much to everyone that put up with that time and supported us. I really appreciate it. Let me show you some stuff. Eli was just asking me if this looks normal, like it doesn't look healthy. This is actually really good. Um, skeleton is exposed, but after shipping, um, just from experience, that looks that looks excellent. It doesn't look like how it's going to look tomorrow. And I think a lot of customers get nervous when they order online for the first time because they do look rough when they come in. But it looks it looks good. The, the water's clear. It's not murky, and it's not stinky. So those are really the most important indicators: is the water that it comes in, rather than. Um, how the coral looks. I'm not seeing anything sliming off. They're actually quite resilient. So we don't have a single DOA yet. We're probably through maybe 15 or 20 percent. So we'll keep going. But he was surprised. I think a lot of people are surprised to see how they show up and how different they're going to look tomorrow. Damn. Okay. Now that is a coral. 
Acanthophilia. The king of meaty LPS corals. This is, he looks really, really good. Beautiful size, really nice color, just stunning. Okay, that was a good little sidetrack there. So what I was saying was, we were closed for COVID. You can't see our pretty faces. And um, people would come outside and be like, you know, what do you have in stock? Can you send me photos? Can you send me photos? And we were, we did a lot of WYSIWYG. And, uh, oh, um, still good. one customer said, can you just upload, send me a video of what you have in stock. I want to buy some stuff. You know, everyone was at home and people who weren't sick were bored out of their minds. And our dear leader, Justin Trudeau, we have a, um, our president, the president of Canada, our dear leader, this fine Republic of Canada. He was giving out money left, right, and center. He lived in Canada. You were alive during COVID. Everyone got money. 2000 for you, 2000 for you. And anyone who thought about getting a dog or cat or fish, I think they did it during that time. There were a lot of pets. So people wanted to spend. And this customer says, uh, March, just record a video and send it to me. And um, I usually don't give out my personal number. I do now. So if you guys ever need help, you know, reefing questions, you guys can message me anytime. Uh, my personal self, 416-967-1111. If you know any questions at all, just call me, text me. Call is better, actually. Because um, it's just nice to talk to you people. So 416-967-1111, just give me a shout. Um, so anyways, at the time I didn't really like giving out my number. She said, why don't you just upload it to YouTube and I'll watch it. I thought, okay, that's a smart idea. It was a big video, it's kind of hard to send and through email. And uh, so I upload it. And the guy spent like 600 bucks sitting in the parking lot outside from this one video. Then I put it on the site. So I put up on the site, um, you know, this week's corals at Frag Box. And I did one, just a simple walkthrough video. And the sales were incredible. And I thought, oh, damn, this really works. This is cool. Let's do a video, not about corals. Let's do a video on, you know, we're, we're, we were here in the shop. We were still working. And we were bored. So I said, let me try a video on, let's do some product review stuff. Let's do some stuff. Because I, I always wanted to kind of do a channel. I didn't have the confidence. Uh, when I first started, even if you go back and watch some of them, I'm really awkward. And um, I didn't really have yeah, a plan. I still don't have a plan, actually. If you notice, most of the videos are just done off the cuff. There's no script. There's no editing, actually. Whatever comes out of my mouth goes in the video, and it just gets uploaded in a string sequence to YouTube. There is zero editing in the videos. If you see any cuts that are happening sort of in the video, I'm doing that with my finger on the camera. I'm not doing that on the on computer, on a video editing software. I'm kind of like thinking about what I'm gonna say next, and then I'm doing it with the camera. I'm cutting in and out as I go, but it's not actually done on the computer. I'll give you an example. This is March's style of editing. Let's say I wanna show you a hammer coral. You know, maybe this gold one. That's a nice gold one. Oh, but look at that. He's missing a head on the side. What about poor hammer coral? Let me show you a healthier one. Oh, look at that, a bouquet of hammer, which is also very nice. Or maybe we can look at a um, torch coral. Okay, so all of that, all of those cuts was just done with my finger on the camera. I'm stopping and going with the record button. Um, I'm not doing it on the computer. That's what I mean about no editing. So maybe it looks like there's some editing. I can promise you, I do not have the time for it. And that's why they are a little choppy. And that's why they are kind of how they are. And I'm still adjusting the tripod as I'm talking to you in this vlog. I'm calling them vlogcasts. That's the name of these things. We're doing vlogcasts. Podcast meets video. Vlogcast. Okay, so that is the story of Frightbox TV. And for better or for worse, whenever you're here, whenever you're here with us, we continue to unbox a very, very nice shipment. You know what? I'm super impressed. Any DOAs yet? No. DOA means dead on arrival, not even one. We have some hammer corals that kind of snapped off the, um, I'll turn this right, that snapped off the base, but other than that, it's actually kind of cool because they're basically self, self-fragging. They've done some of the work for us because most of these colonies, like I said, in the videos, they're gonna get fragged up. Not because I want to frag them. Um, you know, I would, I would prefer to sell, this is beautiful the way it is, but it's just not where the market is. Um, people want frags, people have small tanks in general. Obviously, there's people out there with big tanks, but even they still buy frags. So, just to come, oh, shh. 
shoot. I don't swear on the channel. I got it. Oh, shoot. That's not a swear word, right? Shoot? No. Gosh darn it. Is that allowed? Yep. There's no more swearing on Fredbox TV. Ever. Period. Period. That's it. No more swearing. I want everyone to be able to enjoy it. Watch it with their family and kids. Someone said in another episode that he used to love the channel. But um, because of my potty mouth, he no longer feels comfortable watching with his children. And uh, that's such a shame because we can do this without being cockamouse. We don't have to use um, bad words to describe anything. And it's, uh, it's actually more challenging and expands your vocabulary to try and not swear. It's easy to swear. So you know what? It's a little... Sometimes there's a place for it and maybe sometimes we'll do a video that's you know, not so child friendly. But I think overall it's just a little more classy and it's more entertaining without a bunch of F-bombs and throughout the whole thing. But you're right, because you can start making up stuff too. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like this is knocking futs. You know, this coral's knocking futs. I used to use that one all the time. And then I, re I resorted to actually say what that is supposed to replace, but... Son of a businessman! That coral is really just a bucket of shaving cream. See, I'm gonna show you my trade secret here. After many, many years of doing this, more than a decade of doing this, this is the, the most efficient and fastest technique I've found for unboxing and these things. It's, don't, sh don't share my secrets with anyone. These three bins, that's it. It's all used. So razor blades and three bins, and I cycle quickly through corals and out the door. And I've timed myself in the past. If I'm really in the mood and really hyped up on a coffee, I can get through a box every, like, 15, 15 minutes-ish, 15, 20 minutes. That's like unpack, um, throw out the water, throw out the garbage, and put it in the tank. So that's if I'm really in the mood. If it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm half there and half awake, it's closer to, you know, half an hour box, you know. So if you've got 10 boxes, you do the math. I'm there for quite a while, and that's sort of what inspired these unboxing videos was let me show you guys, you know, how this stuff comes in, because obviously hobbyists are very um, detached from this process of the hobby. You guys would never normally see any corals being unboxed, and I hadn't seen anyone doing videos like that ever on YouTube, so I'm always trying to figure out, you know, just be different, you know, and... Um, do videos that you're not normally going to see and I like transparency so I like when I find a pest and I like showing it to you or I like you know okay I don't like when a coral dies but I like sharing the experience the good and the bad throughout all of it because I think it's too easy to just show you the fire that we get in because we get in some crazy crazy stuff and you're gonna get bored you're just gonna get sensory overload if I just show you crazy torch corals and beautiful aquariums all around the world it's gonna get boring we got to see a little bit of the dark side and a little bit of when stuff doesn't go so well one of the best performing videos that we've ever done on the channel is called we bombed everything died and that was when our display tank hit here in the store took a dump due to a bad heater and basically uh, yeah like the title says in the video you should go and watch it because there's some important lessons in there about heaters and redundancy and about my faults as a business owner and taking complete responsibility for when things go wrong. Like today, what happened, Eli, in the shop? Uh, I broke a pipe. Okay, Eli, <laughs> Eli broke a pipe. I'm in the basement and this pipe is shooting water all over the place and he's super apologetic. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Like there's no apologies to be had because I designed it in such a way that that was even a possibility. And the funny thing is, walking by it, not even five minutes before. I don't know if you guys have heard me say this on the channel before. Hold on. I do not believe in coincidence. I'm super spiritual. And there's definitely, a hundred percent, there is a intelligent creator to this universe. A hundred percent. I believe in divine timing. Um, I don't believe in just pure luck, even though I've been very lucky. Because so many times here in the shop, like like today, I was walking by, I noticed it, I'm like, you know what? That is a recipe for disaster. At some point, someone's gonna do something because it's exposed pipe 
with salt next to it. I said, it's going to happen at some point. And I kind of put it in the back of my head. That's something i got to get around to fixing. Not even five minutes later. Not even five minutes. Not even. The pipe breaks. I'm walking, I'm walking by it. He's upstairs. And I'm in downstairs as it snaps. And water starts to go everywhere. So that's what I mean when I say divine... Timing. I don't believe in coincidence. So many things happen like that here in the shop. I showed you guys in the other video when I'm rewiring re the tank because, you know, a couple stores actually burnt to a crisp in the U.S. Two big stores completely burned down. And so I see these articles on retailers and I think, you know what, the store could be safer. There's, there's some shortcuts that I took and I need to, you know what, devote the time. This is, you know, there are things that I have on my to-do list which are important but not urgent so they need to get done they're important but not urgent i have other things that are important and urgent i have some things that are urgent but not really important but they just need to happen in a certain way so i kind of like I, I set up my day in terms of what is the most urgent what is the most important and then when there's time left then i get around to the smaller projects so after seeing those stores that you know burnt to a crisp which is so sad for the business owner, for the animals in the store, obviously, you know, they're, they're burning alive. Um, for, for the community, you guys lost the shop. It's just so sad and so avoidable. So I go through the store and I, I made the videos of me just tying up all the wires and all the loose ends and not being lazy and making that really a priority that's something that's important and urgent because it can happen. Not even a week after I do that, we have a flood in the store. And where I had the power bars, they would have been drenched from a skimmer that overflowed and very, very lazy wiring I am on my part. Um, so that's why I, I say I believe in divine timing. And, and there's just so many times like that in the store. I've just been so lucky when I just walk by and then in that moment, catastrophe is happening in front of my eyes not when I'm away on vacation it's actively happening and um, I just think that certain things line up in a certain way and this is such a cool and wonderful world we live in and I, I, I'm not convinced that it is pure chance but that is a topic for I think another very long unboxing uh, what did I call this vlogcast very long vlogcast we're not going to get religious on this on this one today but just giving you some of the insight of what happened here today in the shop. And um, if you have loose wires, actually speaking about safety, one of the new products I'm actively designing for our Reef Casta aquariums and stands is a electrical box that fits underneath our Studio uh, 12 right here. That's our most popular tank. Uh, actually the, the Pico 6 gallon and the Studio 12, but they both share the same footprint. So they're both 16 by 15 and they'll both fit on that stand. So what I'm doing underneath I'm building or designing, uh, I'm in the middle of designing a water change station that builds in underneath because when I used to have a tank at home, it used to drive me and I guess more of my parents nuts um, because there's so many other things that come along with the hobby. Like you have your tank, but then you need your water change buckets, your salt, your hoses, your pumps, your heaters, all that stuff. Where's it gonna go? It ends up usually taking up a washroom somewhere else. Like where do you do yours, in your dorm room? Uh, well, I have my apartment now, so I keep all my in my bathroom, yeah. Yeah, so your bathroom, one bathroom in your house almost ends up being dedicated or, you know, it goes, it gets sacrificed to the aquarium in, in a way. And wall, um, wall hammer. So I think that's part of the hobby a lot of people don't see. I have a lot of customers here that their bathtub ends up being the water change station. And when you have a big tank, you know, you have to think about these things in advance. Where are you going to hold your RO? Where are you going to hold your salt water, how are you going to mix it in advance. So that, those are things I'm designing for this stand. Is a little built-in one that is really, really neat and sexy and cool and well thought out. And the second thing is this electrical sort of containment box with a power bar that is all labeled. So an individual switches because I find very often here in the shop, you have to turn off, you know, just your pump or just your ATO or just your light or just your heater or all of the above. And if you're not into a full-blown controller and you're not spending, you know, 1100 bucks on... They are awesome. I'm not saying they're not good, but they are expensive. And that's an Apex A3 Pro. Um, this is sort of the next best thing. So I want all the wiring to be really, really clean and put away safely in a kind of cool 
um, bamboo box, because I'm really obsessed with this packaging that we're doing here for our refractometer. So this bamboo box, I want to take that idea, but apply it to a electrical box and just have all your wiring hidden underneath and super safe. So aesthetically, it's going to be nice. Safety-wise, it's going to be nice um, because there's going to be virtually no chance of that power bar getting wet because it's going to be a contained unit. And um, sort of my experiences here in the store as a store owner, but also as a hobbyist, are reflected in the products that we designed for that thing. So it says it all over our site. I'm not trying to like um, inflate us, but it says on the site all over, it's a tank for hobbyists designed by hobbyists. And it really is true. It's just, yeah, I have one at home on my desk. Um, it's always there. I'm always thinking of how I can improve it. And I don't think any other aquarium manufacturer today can make the same statement. I don't think they can say that it was designed you know, for them, for what they wanted to see out of an all-in-one reef tank. And just kind of like my years of passion embodied in one product so that I can share it with the world. And that is my spiel for Reef Casa for the day. Not so good either, let me show you. This may be our first DOA, water murky. Doesn't smell good, smells awful actually. I'm seeing a little bit of tissue loss on the bottom of the coral there. Um, I think that this is too big of a piece for this much water. It should go in more water. I don't see any carbon here in the bottom, which is good practice. Nope, there's none, but um, there are pieces of carbon. Look at that water, that's really gross. Um, that's the zoanthelli coming off. This is not a good sign. The smell is awful, and um, it's a little strange because we have carbon in some of the other ones that don't really need it, in my experience, some of the LPS, but the acro is really where you do. And we're actually gonna start experimenting this week with a touch of carbon in every single acro frag that we send out because I think um, it will really help with the sliming. Um, I don't know if that's why this one didn't make it. I think it's not enough water. I think this should have gone in a bigger bag just from my experience with shipping them out. I'm gonna throw it in here anyways and hope for the best. I am seeing some color, so uh, it's a little murky. I know other shops, I've helped other some friends like unpack corals in the past. They would just toss this because they don't want to um, risk contaminating the the water with the murkiness because it kind of like starts to sloth off. Is that the word? No, sleuth? I don't know. We're going to give it a shot. Every every life is precious, so. I don't know. Corals make bounce backs when you least expect it. This is the coral soup. Okay, why do I throttle myself when I'm talking about our product brand? Because I don't want this channel to just become a funnel for like sales for the casa. But at the same time, I do because I, you know, but I don't want to just pour out our channel um, for that purpose. The swearing calls. Yeah, like it, this channel is about so much more than that. But the thing is that that project, those tanks, those things bring me so much joy. And they're really at the center of my attention. Like when I go home from work, I finish here and then I go to work on that and product design and talk with suppliers because a lot of them are overseas and on a different time schedule than here. So it forces me to stay up late and do that. So I think it, it's just as, because I'm passionate and it's an interest of mine, naturally it's going to come out in the videos, but I want you to know that we're always going to keep it fun and lighthearted and do as many cool and interesting and different videos as we can here. Should have had the camera rolling. We just had somebody walk in trying to sell us hats and belts. Um, this is an interesting street, Marley, that we're on. We get a lot of uh, interesting folk up and down this street. It's not the absolute best area in the city, but I happen to live across the street, and uh, this place came up for rent, and I thought, wow, no commuting, that would be nice. And it just worked out. So it is good because, like, look, if I stay here late at night, yeah, mm -hmm. I can... Um, I'm at home in 60 seconds. I just walked there. I basically drive nowhere but the airport and a couple suppliers. And um, it's good too because sometimes at night I'll have a thought or I'll forget something on and I literally just jump out of bed and come over here. So I think in a lot of ways it's been really, really helpful and monumental, like, like important for the success of the business and being so close. In other ways, it's not so good because I don't have that work um, life separation, you know, even I, I can be, I can almost never take a day off because even if I try, it's hard for me to just sit still and do nothing and I end up just coming here anyways, even on my days off when I, I tell myself, okay, there's no work today, there's no frag box, I almost always end up here. So I don't know who I'm kidding by saying that. Uh, 
So it has its pros and its cons. Obviously, no traffic is awesome. Because if you're from Toronto, you know how bad it is. But after being to Indonesia, I have a whole new outlook on traffic. We actually don't have any traffic here. What we think is traffic is like light congestion by Indonesian standards. We've never truly experienced traffic. You are going through, you know, parts of Bali trying to get to Banyuwangi, which is normally a three or four hour drive, and then you get stuck behind a truck, it just turned into a seven or eight hour drive. We don't have that here. At its worst, I think you're, at worst, 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 I think your commute will double. I think that's about the worst. You're not adding, you know, if your commute to work is 20 minutes or half an hour, and you get stuck in traffic, it doesn't become a three and a half hour commute. Jakarta, my mind was blown with the amount of people and traffic. Go on YouTube and Google Jakarta traffic. It is such a big problem there. They're literally moving the capital of that country from Jakarta to somewhere else. And traffic is one of the issues. So that's kind of the cool thing about traveling. Um, it's very eye-opening and I always come back super, super grateful for you know everything I have here and life here and, and the team here and life here is actually quite good so it's too easy to complain I'm trying my best not to we really have no traffic but I guess everything is relative so I don't I'm not trying to say that your commute isn't bad if it is where am I gonna put this coral man we are packed like I'm starting to get a little creative there is more space in the basement but I would like to show everything off this weekend and then maybe start to move some of the pieces down there because people want to see it you know they come in and it's it's just it's very satisfying to see a store full like i mean really full and clean full of coral okay boys and girls that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it the corals are looking really good i'll do a walk through um in a couple days i'll give them some time to sort of like hang out and chill and acclimatize so much euphilia like look at that oh so so many really nice indophilias our fragoon ended up being a catch-all for just about everything there's just corals on top of corals on top of corals look at these indophilia and they're only going to get better um, with time if you like the channel subscribe and we will see you guys back here on the next episode of fragbox tv bye for now